it's always about the halfway stage of a project that I realise I could be out fishing instead of messing around with bits of wood and epoxy. But there you go. Over the years, I've tried quite a few different methods of adding just the right amount of weight to a layer. But for this project, I wanted to try something a little more old school from Archimedes. So for a bit of tabletop science, I'm cutting up an old milk bottle to make a displacement vessel. And if I bend down the handle, I can make a spout and then secure it with some tape. To use it, I'm simply going to fill it with water. Until it overflows into a measuring jar. And then I can pour it away to reset it. To protect the unsealed wood on the layer, I'm going to wrap it in some cling film to make sure it's watertight. Then I can push it into the water and the runoff will give me the volume, which in this case looks to be about 50ml. But to get the weight and a more accurate reading, I'm going to weigh the water, which surprisingly is bang on 50 grams. If I add enough internal weight to this layer to make it weigh more than 50 grams, then in fresh water it'll sink. And if it weighs less than 50 grams, it'll float. Because I want a slow sinking layer, at this stage of the build I'm going to weight it to 50 grams and later hopefully the denser top coat of epoxy should make it sink very slowly. Adding hooks and hardware like screw eyes and split rings will increase the weight without affecting the volume too much but for the real bulk I'm using pewter slugs. To make the slugs I need a mould and for that I'm using two pieces of half inch MDF that I've cut to the same size. With a carpenter square for a guide and an ordinary wood saw I can cut some shallow grooves in both pieces. If I can keep my work true the grooves should line up to create guide holes for a bit. To drill out the cavities I've clamped up the blocks in a vise and first of all I'm going to drill a hole using a pilot bit and then come back and drill out the full size bit. To melt the pewter I'm using a small kitchen hot plate and an egg cup I've modified by adding a spout. Modern pewter unlike lead is non-toxic but it's not exactly cheap and I, I normally melt down old ornaments that I've salvaged from the junk. Just before pouring I can skim off the dross and then gripping the egg cup with a pair of pliers I can pour the mould. After a few minutes, I can open the mould and tap out the slugs. And then when it's fully cooled, I can trim off any overpour or flashing with a pair of cutters. Back with the body, I can mix and match the slugs until I get near that ideal weight of 50 grams. Unfortunately for this layer, I have more weights than holes, so it's back to the drill press. With a couple of extra holes drilled, I need to seal the layer before I can balance it, so I'm mixing up another batch of 5 minute epoxy. I find a bamboo skewer really helps pick up the resin and also fully wet out the cavities with the weights of the sink. For the back and underside of the body, I can mop up some epoxy with a cloth and use the end of my finger to spread it on the wood. I want it to soak in and leave some finish behind, but not a heavy coat. Once it looks like I've got a reasonable coverage, I can set it aside for a couple of hours to cure. When the body's ready, I can dry fit the weights and hardware, and then it's in the tank for a test. At the moment the layer is sitting almost level between the eyes, but I'd like it to lean back slightly to compensate for the heavy trace that I'll be using when I'm fishing. To adjust the balance, I can swap the weights around and then test again. If it's all looking good, I can towel it off and leave it to dry. With the layer balanced, I can start to finish the body with some 400 grit sandpaper. Because the dust from sand and epoxy can be quite harmful, I'm doing this over a vacuum hose. Despite going to all that trouble to create smooth sides, they also need a sand to give the next layer of epoxy a key. Before I can fit the weight, 
I need to ream out the holes as the epoxy slightly closed them up. Then the weights can just be pushed into place, obviously in the right order. To cover the weights I'm using some thin balsa sheet and a leather punch to make some covers. With a drop of super glue added they can be pushed into position and then sanded off flush to the body with some more drops of super glue to seal them. As well as the weight cavities the eye holes also need to be reamed out. Then with some thin plastic I can roll up a makeshift piping bag and fill it with 5 minute epoxy. This is great for injecting the resin deep into the holes before pushing the eyes home. To prepare for painting I've cut some thin strips of masking tape that I can work around the edge of the side panels and then completely mask them off. To paint the layer I have an airbrush that's linked to a compressor and for a base coat on the underside of the layer I'm using ordinary household acrylic paint. This has been thinned down with an acrylic reducer until it reaches the kind of consistency of milk. To hold the layer when spraying I placed it in a helping hands device these are normally used for soldering. With the added thinners the paint tends to go on in very fine mist, these tend to dry very quickly but they do need a little bit of help between coats from a heat source to really set the paint. It doesn't take long to almost mat out the underside, but the thinness of the paint really lets the grain shine through. With a bit of a purge at the cleaning station, I can fill the airbrush with some red acrylic ink, which can be sprayed straight from the bottom. Spraying the transparent red ink on a white background means it only takes a couple of coats to get a really deep colour. For the back of the layer I'm filling up with black and rather than clean out the brush I'm just spraying through the red. Acrylic black is probably the easiest to spray, it gives a quick even coverage. And once it's had a bit of heat and time to dry I can peel off the masks. To finish with the black I'm going to run a fine spray along the edge and just soften that and blend it into the silver. and also create a patch for the eye. To add a final punch I'm using a thin shimmer coat just to give a bit of colour shift and sparkle. To highlight the eyes I've punched out a couple of pieces of foil tape and stuck them down. And for the pupils I've picked out some red half domes which just need a drop of super glue and a steady hand. To prep for the clear coat I've set up a simple disco ball motor with some wire and a swivel to keep the body rotating while I work. For a clear coat I'm using some Envirotex light again and rather than a glue spreader I'm applying a thick and even coat with a brush. And when it looks like it's got an even coverage, you can give it the once over with a blow lamp to pop any bubbles. Then it can be left for six to eight hours to tackle. For the final epoxy coat, I'm adding a tiny amount of mica powder into the mix. In this quantity it's almost invisible, but the particles add, a, add a just another level of bling to the layer. And then it's the long wait to let the layer cure fully, which can take anything up to three days. I always think there's probably too many ways to judge a layer colour, does it swim, float, sink, can I cast it, all these kind of things I come to the water with, 
but I suppose the real Jujuvale anime maker is the fish. Although, I'd have to admit, I'll probably never tire of throwing bits of wood at them. Thanks for watching.